Hi, my name's Tom. I'm from London, England. Um, I have a restaurant there called Story. Um, I came to Iceland for two days. Yeah, basically to come and um, experience what Iceland had to offer, the culture, uh, everything around that they have to offer, the produce. So I went to the waterfall, it was pretty amazing. Um, a natural waterfall. It's fantastic. It was uh, breathtaking, to be honest. Um, I like, got to go right up beside it. It was pretty surreal. Um, yeah, something that I'll uh, remember for a very long time. I went to visit some locals that smoke trout. He's there in his little, little cabin, just smoking his trout. This guy looked like he'd grown up outside. He's something else. This massive Icelandic guy with a big Icelandic tattoo on his arm there, just chopping up the fish. They've been smoked for three days over lamb shit. Taste it, it the trout was amazing. I mean, I'd never tasted anything like that. It's been smoked that way before. Something that was very new to me. Something that I really, really enjoyed. And it's one of the best things I've probably tried in a long, long time. After the trout, we went on to a um, cow shed cafe. Um, there was two, two ladies there. They owned 19 cows. It's amazing. Which you can fucking see from the, the cafe. Um, so we went there and we tried the cheese that was made from their own cows that were, like I said, you can see. While we were there, there was a cow that had just been born. It was one day old and I got to name it. So of course we named it after myself which is a pretty special thing to have been able to do. Arctic char that was uh, caught this morning. And now for the best bit to taste and see how fresh it really is. Wow. The girls at the Cowshed Cafe were fantastic. After having lunch at the, at the cafe, the daughter took us up to get some rye bread that was steaming in the ground. So we went up together, pulled it out of the ground and then just poof, popped it out, this rye bread that had been cooking for 24 hours, steaming. It was fantastic, that for me was probably the highlight of everything that I'd seen so far. Same with an Icelandic elf, eating bread baked in the earth. With a fro frozen butter. It's delicious. <laughs> yeah, with a frozen bum. <laughs> no, it's pretty cold. <laughs> You know, I went away trying to get it round my head that, really? Perfect. This is happening in Iceland? Fantastic. Can, can England be a little bit more like Iceland, please? So after being amazed by the, the whole bread in the ground experience, um, we travelled on through to the uh, geothermal area which is basically these natural spas and springs just shooting up from the ground. Um, and I was very lucky to be able to take a dip in the uh, geothermal pools, um, 
which was pretty amazing. It's like my, it's like freezing outside, snow falling. Then you just step outside into these hot springs, and you just walk in, and it's like you like you think when when they when people talk about it, you think, oh yeah, okay, geothe geothermal spa, okay, it's gonna be great. And then you get in, and it's like it's not great. It's like fantastic. I got told I'm coming to Iceland to sit in some spas. It's too deep. <laughs> no, this is what happens when Englishmen come to Iceland, yeah? <laughs> Back at home, I'll go and buy a bottle of water for two pound, two pound fifty. In Iceland, I come to Iceland and I just stop by the road, walk 20 steps to a creek, and I can drink it straight out of the creek with nothing, just a cup. And it tastes... It's pretty good better than any other water I've ever drank. And, um, you know, I think that is a very majestic, magical, special thing that um, will stay with me for a very long time. Um, and it's them kind of experiences that I'll take home. It's a very um, special place. So we arrived at the beef farm where I met the farmer and um, he had a hundred cows, um, all milking cows. He, he basically showed me the process of how they milk the cows here. And it was just like a, a robot, you know, I nicknamed it RoboCow because it's like, it's like a, a PlayStation for cows. Um, so it's pretty uh, crazy to see. And again, there was a cow there um, just about to give birth. So I also got to name my second cow in Iceland. Yeah, so now I'm owning up the cows in Iceland. Um, it's pretty cool. Um, and then he, uh, he took us over to see the bulls, which was, um, to say at least, quite an intimidating area. A lot of really horny cows giving you that look. Whoa. I got a little scared at one point. He gave us some um, of his carpaccio, again, it was with Angelica, and some uh, parmesan, and it was really, really good. Um, at right at the end, he gave us his ice cream that was homemade, which was used from the, um, the unpasteurized milk. My favorite, personally, was the sheep sorrel. Really well balanced, super creamy, just great taste. Well, thank you very much for everything and showing me around. I really enjoyed it. Thank you for having me. Day two in Iceland. It's fucking freezing and we're going to dive to some mussels. Looking round for the perfect flavour. So we went out on the boat, pulled some mussels up in the socks, which was great. He explained to me how they feed um, which I didn't really know before, and how he grades them. And then they, it basically takes two years to make a muscle for consumer, um, which was something that was really interesting to see. So the better the ocean, the better the muscle. Oh, yeah. yeah. The, these muscles are the only muscles in the world that you can pull straight from, straight from the ocean and eat because of how clean the ocean is. I got to drive the boat. Okay, just want to let everyone know that. I came to Iceland and conquered. We went back to his factory and he showed me, you know, basically what was pretty amazing was they have a pipe, a 17 meter long pipe that goes from the factory into the ocean. And that's the water they pump over the mussels once they've picked them to store them, which was, um, you know, it's a pretty great thing to see. Um, it just shows the length that these guys go to to get the best product. Um, when we uh, very kindly got invited up to the house to try some of the mussels, um, which of course I was really happy about. Is this what everybody drives in Iceland? We just had a hot, really hot pan in the mussels and I was like, 
you just gonna put them in like that? And he was like, yeah. So here we just have the mussels, they're gone in dry. They've just been pulled from the ocean, like, an hour ago? Yeah, what? half an hour ago. Half an hour ago. So they're literally just cooking in their own seawater. I mean, look at that, man. The floor under our feet whispers out. Come on in, come on. Man, that is fucking off the chain. The best mussels I've ever eaten, period. I asked him how quick he could get them to come into London, so I think that goes to show how good they really were. And he was an amazing guy and had a great passion for what he was doing, and it really showed with the, with the final product. Uh, at the beer factory, uh, some microbrewery in Iceland, uh, I met the, the son's owner, who at first I had to show how to play football, because um, obviously anybody from England needs to uh, let anyone else in Europe know that we are the best nation at football. In return, he got to show me um, how they make their beer, how it's processed. So he showed me, firstly, I tasted um, unfiltered beer, which was really, really good, actually, super caramelly. You could really taste the barley. So I got to taste four or five different beers, Go, go. Got to try the Angelica beer, which was probably the highlight of the uh, brewery. Oh, yes. And yeah, it was really great. It was really, really enjoyable. So, I think they saved the best till last because uh, the final stop on the trip, we went to um, see a guy that makes bacalao, which is uh, salt fish. Um, so, on arrival, um, I firstly got to taste his grandmother's homemade moonshine fermented shark's head i'd heard a little bit about it but um i didn't really know too much so he explained to me what what fermented shark's head is and why it's fermented and uh, basically i had to try some it smells revolting please smell it i want you to smell it please smell it so it took me about 0.1 second to spit it out and start spewing because it's probably the most disgusting thing I've ever put in my mouth. Um, which obviously made me feel a bit of a pussy. You know, I, I did get a certificate saying that I was part of the Shark Egg Club now, but I don't think I really deserve it, to be honest. The, the guy that was showing me was a fantastic, fantastic guy. I mean, we went on from that to a, another thing that was a, a very special. This, the, the bacala, the salt fish. Um, he showed me the process of keeping it in the dry salt and then we got to obviously we got to taste some and that was something that was you know you see now you see now why so many people buy this and why it's so widely spread heard of because it is really really delicious it's such a, a great thing and uh, again very lucky to try that and try it from somebody that clearly is a master in what they do and then just to top everything off um, he asked me if I liked horses and I told him that I did and we went up to see his horses. He had 13 in total. Um, so I did a little bit of bareback horse riding um, just to show Iceland how, how the English really get down. You know, I think it was important. So I just um, thought I'd jump on and went for a little ride on his favorite horse uh, called Star. And that was really something, that was, again, that was very special. You know, I never thought coming to Iceland in the same hour I go from eating fermented shark's head to salt bacalao to then um, riding horses bareback across the field. So um, a trip that I'll never forget and I'll definitely um, want to come back very soon. She likes me. And in the hectic world we live in where everybody wants things now, now, now and faster and quicker and the whole Icelandic journey has really inspired me. Just the way that they use everything around them, everything from the natural geothermal to the water in the creek, the bread being baked in the ground underneath them, 
to the small guy that smokes the trout that he catches every day. Um, you know, very happy people, and and I think that's the biggest thing that I'll take back and definitely inspired me um, as a cook and a chef. <laughs>